Dan Randolph, and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Uh, it's that time of year, Christmas is around, and we thought we'd get the guys in from the Irish Sports Memorabilia Fair in with some very nostalgic shirts, as you can see on the wall and what the lads are wearing. Uh, firstly, lads, uh, what's your shirt collecting all about? Right, well, look, we're all football fans. We all love it. And you'll find is that so many of us, like when we were growing up, football shirts is what it was all about. You know, every season there was a new shirt. They were all different styles. They were all, in the 80s and particularly in the 90s, they all got a bit mad. And it got really exciting, you know. Yeah, like, um, I think uh, when I was a kid, I got the first football jersey for my birthday. And uh, since then, I just wanted to always have something that nobody else in gym class had or whatever. So something weird. The uglier, the better for me. That's what I'd always be after. So, yeah, yeah. I think we all have our own little niche when it comes to collecting these jerseys. Yeah, and you, you, you kind of touched off air there about the kind of Mick McCarthy. Uh, he's obviously got back as manager now and stuff like that. And you kind of wanted to touch on it a little bit on the nostalgia, obviously, with the shirts. And it's obviously that one there from 2002. Uh, absolutely. Like, whether you're into shirt collecting or not, if you're a football fan and you see a particular shirt, it immediately brings back memories of what happened that day. I mean, even if we have a look here now, for Rovers fans, they see that shirt, they think by the time they first went blind looking at a football shirt. You look at the, the Bowes shirt, the classic Jody shirt, the Adidas, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. This, the, the Shell shirt here, this is from the European Cup Winners' Cup against Panathinaikos, it was Paul Doolan's shirt. And, uh, but just the, 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 they're so zany, the schemes, when you look at what's available now, and it's all templates, and it's all standard. Back then, it was just so fantastic, you know. Yeah. And obviously, this one speaks for itself. The 2002 <laughs> shirt, yeah, that's uh, that was uh, Ireland against Nigeria. Um, that was the friendly just before the World Cup. Wasn't just before, it? I think we lost it as well. I did, were we on a run? We we're on a run of of like not losing at Lansdowne Road, and we might have lost just before the World Cup. But um, yeah, that would that that's a nice one as well. Uh, double XL. All the players were in gigantic shirts, so that uh, might have been like. Yeah, you obviously, I always spirit. remember Robbie in a really massive Robbie Keane in a massive. Yeah. Cheers, it's all yeah. short sleeve though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no options there. You, double XL or nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so where where would uh, this fair be on? Oh, the fair. So, and, uh, and what's, what's yeah. So, we'll, we'll, yeah. we have a Facebook page called Our Sports Memorabilia Affairs. Every so often, which we, you can join. Which you can join uh, if you just uh, click on the link below. Uh, you'll be able to uh, <laughs> just here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll be able to uh, pop pop in there and see every few months. Basically, a bunch of collectors we get together. Um, in different places, but the next one is on on December the 8th, Saturday, December the 8th, uh, in the Backpage pub in Fisborough. Brilliant pub, brilliant sports pub. Uh, it's in, obviously, Bose land, but it's not just for Bose fans. Uh, so Rose uh, fans just don't wear your, your hoops? Oh, they can wear their hoops. Now, they can't guarantee they won't get stick, but, like, look, I'm a UCD fan, so I don't... Uh, I don't hold any grudges. Yeah, no one really holds grudges yeah, against ECD. Pretty much safe anywhere you go. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. But uh, no, it's a great opportunity. Like, I mean, even if even if you're not coming along to buy something, just uh, the nostalgia factor itself. Like we we've done these markets before, and having people coming in, leafing through the stuff, and you'll see guys pulling out a jersey that maybe they had as a kid, or just brings back memories. And the kind of the buzz you get off seeing people doing that is brilliant. And then just the banter and the chat between people who share. Uh, I don't know. The same, the same interest is kind of cool, and yeah. Absolutely, because there's there's plenty of people out there. You should see shirt collecting all the time, and obviously I'm a member of your group, and I see, you know, every time I see an Ireland jersey, is, is, you, you, I'm always hounding New York, and you get me one without a sponsor. But we'll get to that later on. But what kind of got you into collecting shirts? Well, I mean, look, when you're a real kid, you want to wear a shirt because you want to be your hero, whoever your hero may be, you know, and uh, you want to go out there on the pitch. It didn't matter when I was a kid. You didn't really have replica shirts for kids. If you're really lucky, you might get an O'Neill's. Most people are going around with a champion cheese green Ireland shirt. And you wear whoever your hero would be, Kevin Moran or Niall Quinn or whoever it might have been growing up. That was it. And then when you got into your teenagers, then you got you got something a bit more professional, one of the ones you got in the shops or something like that. But what really got me into shirt collecting, and a lot of people in Ireland actually, was when Ireland brought in the shirt sponsorship and it had Opal on the front. You can see this one has Opal on the front. And... Uh, the Ireland was unique in world in world football in that its national team shirt being sold in the shops had a sponsor on it, um, and it was fine. But then when you realised the players had ones that didn't, suddenly you were like, "Oh, I want one of those. I want something like that, which has no no sponsor yeah, no on the front." On it, yeah. And 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 that has continued today. And even today, people buying shirts they don't necessarily want to get one with a three. They don't want to get one with a 
It's actually funny because we're actually running a, a Facebook competition for the, the away Ireland jersey, and a lot of people coming has got. I won't be sharing or, or, or entering a competition where it has the three sponsor on it. Yeah. and look to be fair to any of the sponsors, they put a lot of money into Irish football, um, and they, they're very they're, they're great advocates for the, the the team. They advertise it. Um, and you know they obviously get that advertising out of it as well. But as a fan, you're not really interested in the company. You're interested in the team and something that's the same as the players wear would be it. So you kind of get into that. And then when the internet took off, it just exploded. Like all of a sudden, you had a way that you could connect with connector collectors all over the world. And yeah. and that's if you're that you're that kind of collector. Others would be more kind of hipster. You know. You're looking at me there. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know more the hipster collectors. Well, well, no, essentially, my thing is kind of the, the, the hideously ugly jerseys like that. That Shamrock Rovers shirt is a thing of beauty and the, and the shell, shell shirt as well. Um, yeah, well, when I was a kid, I got the Ireland jersey. Beauty for the is twi- in the eye of the beholder, as you say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, go on. What were you saying? No, no, I was going to say, yeah, when I was a kid, it was the, my 12th birthday. I got the um, uh, Ireland... My, 1998 kiss uh, went up to I'm from the country went up to Arnott's for the day big deal into the the Man United shop that was in there got uh, I panicked and got a uh, Townsend on the back because I, I couldn't think and you had to pay by letter then as well so it cost me an absolute, or it cost my mother sure, an absolute, Quinn. No, uh, uh, cost, cost me mother an absolute fortune but um yeah, that kind of got me going. And then what well, you said about the internet, like you could you could go online. I was ending up in like on like French websites and, and stuff, buying like random shirts, uh, posting off money in envelopes, uh, like in the hope that this jersey would would show up a few uh, weeks later or whatever. Uh, but it was always like just the kind of weirder or more unusual, the better. Because I wanted to wear something into school that nobody else had. So that, that was kind of my thing. And then... Um, yeah, anything that's like uh, kind of unique, Adidas or, or Puma, vintage stuff, 80s and 90s, that's kind of my thing. So, yeah, uh, the smaller the club, the, the more unique, the better. Oh, yeah. And you, you see it at the five sides now. If you play still any five sides or 11 sides, you'll always have one or two of the lads and they've got some mad top yeah. from some mad part of the world. And they, that's what they like to do. They like to wear it, whereas other people, you might go to a game. And typically, if you're into collecting, and you say, say you've got an Ireland shirt on or you see someone on a shirt and you know what they're like, you might give them a little bit of a nod, they'll give you a nod. You know there's a bit of respect because yeah, yeah. that's what they're into. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's just a very cool hobby. Obscure yeah. jerseys. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, and talking about obscure, like now Ireland, say, are changing their jersey every, like, um, the last one might Feels be, like a year. Yeah, not yeah, even, might, not even yeah. a year. And it's, uh, I don't know, there, there was something, like there's something special about when you got a jersey when you were a kid. You had to make it last a long time. So, ah, yeah, yeah. I know, like the fact that some of these shirts have have made it this long, like stayed in such good condition, and you know they're still kind of around, and and I, yeah, just the nostalgia that it brings up. It's it's a, it's, a, it's. I a, think that's a credit for you for keeping them uh, so uh, yeah. in good condition. Yeah. But uh, um, what are the jerseys that you most get asked about? Oh, I guess the Ireland Italia ninety and yeah, Ar- Euro eighty eight. Yeah, Italian ninety and Euro eighty eight by far. Yeah, the World, World Cup '94 and World Cup 2002 as well. Like people remember them. See, people, if you're into shirt collecting, you might look for something. So you do get the odd person come up to you saying, "Any chance you have, like, you know, a Duckla Prague away shirt?" You know, like that's just random, right? Yeah. And you might, okay. So if you're interested in anything, come on up and say, "You never know what you'll find," right? <laughs> but what I would say is that you know, generally people will associate, even if they're a collector or not, shirts with games. Like if I said to you, like. What teams, what would your three teams be? Like, obviously, Paul, I know you, you're a Shells man, Everett man, and Ireland man. Yeah. If you had to pick each of those, what would be the three shirts that would spring to mind as the ones you could think of? Um, the JW Horror one, uh, when they played Deportivo, Shells. Because you can remember the match and how That's they got the match, yeah. yeah. Um, was it the, the away one, the yellow one, was it? The way that no, is, uh, like, no, actually, I actually have Glenn Fitzpatrick's one from that year when uh, they won the league in Richmond. Yeah, actually, but um, I'd actually uh, that wouldn't be too small for you. I wouldn't. It'd be a big shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be. It was like a large like, so I remember I was only about thirteen or fourteen going around wearing it, like yeah. proud as punch going around yeah, wearing it. The, the yeah. aircon league badges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And if you're for men, actually, I had on it as well. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the Everton '98 Catamarchy. Uh, ah yeah, Danny one to one. Yeah, yeah, that one, and then uh, the Ireland one. My favourite one's probably, I think it was the 88 one, but yeah. the one that, that one's probably my favourite one though, if, I, if I'm going back thinking about it, yeah. I think my brother's one would have been the away one of that one. And the funny thing about people's memories of, of World Cup 92 is it's so bittersweet, 
Like, you think Roy Keane, you think Mick McCarthy, and Mick is back and Roy is gone. Again, it's such an odd sort of dynamic. Yeah. We're back to the future again, <laughs> 2002, 2018, 16 years on. But it's, it's when you look at it, like, that is it. It evokes memories. And it's it's a brilliant thing. And you could look at it and how something that's basically done up in a chop shop in China or Thailand or something like that, thrown together, and 20 years later you're talking about it and you're still remembering things. Nowadays, tickets are all digital. Programs are just ads. The shirts, they have meaning. You can wear them. You can play football in them. You, they, they actually are something tangible. Yeah. And they can really, really invoke memories of great, great times. That sure you reminds know? me now of two games, uh, Matty Holland, Cameroon, and, and Robbie against uh, Germany. Yeah. Jason McTeer against Holland, probably. That one as well. I was ball boy for that one yeah. as well. So I suppose, yeah, if you think about that what one. A great, 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 great set of shirts and great set of games. Like, you yeah. know? The, the first one now that comes to my mind is Iran. Yeah, I, I don't know what that is. I think we're having a big because it must have been it must have been on during the day. Like it must have been at a weird time. It was because I, I was like in I school. I was in school. We rolled out the TV. I'm sure a lot of people ah, who are yeah. my age watched us now did the same. We rolled it out on the TV. And I remember actually running home. And at the time I, I ran home, we were we won that game. Uh, it was a one one off uh, away. T- away no, was w- one nil away. We one lost. Nil. They scored the yeah. last minute. So, yeah, so yeah. I was running home, and when I got home, they had scored, and I was like yeah. freaking out when I got yeah. in the door. But we managed to hold on and, yeah. and go through. Yeah. But uh, no, no, I can see why that game sticks out in your mind yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I just, just remember like, the good times, and obviously <laughs> yeah. Matt, Matt's been on the show before, and uh, we were just kind of going back through things, and those, those goals came up. He, we didn't wear the that that jersey against Portugal. That one no, time. we didn't. We, we the fact that jersey, I don't think we have one to show you. But the material on that jersey is the the worst material. Oh, it is. It's like Brillo it. pads. It was, uh, yeah, it was like a holy jumper. No. Yeah. But again, great results. Po- Portugal away, Portugal at home. Netherlands. Uh, the Netherlands away two two. Yeah. And the little double back heel from McAteer and Noel Quinn, and then uh, or from Robbie Keane and Noel Quinn, and then McAteer hammered it. And uh, Robbie Keane with the header. Funny thing was with that tournament, it shows you how things change so fast. Robbie scored in that game, in the opening game of the qualifiers of 2002, against the Dutch. He then went the entire qualification campaign, and he didn't score again. Yeah, I remember reading that. Until he scored in the playoff against Iran. Yeah, yeah. Great volley, right? And then he scores more goals than any Irish players ever scored at a tournament yeah. in the World Cup. But people were saying Robbie should be dropped, and Robbie wasn't good enough, and Robbie was a flash in the pan, and he was a spent force. It's amazing. Things change so fast in football, and it's so exciting. And you forget a lot of that. No one would have said Robbie Keane was rubbish because, even though they were saying that at the time, because you remember the good things and you remember yeah, the results. But I always found with Robbie, regardless of his record, and I love him, I'd probably be my idol as a kid growing up, him or Duffer, or maybe Jay Gibbon, but I wasn't a keeper. Um, but those three would always be my kind of, oh, oh my God. But I always found Robbie was a bit underappreciated by our fans. Yeah. And, you know, people are always saying that he scored against lesser teams and stuff like that. I didn't think that was the case. That, at... that was always the conversation, wasn't it? Whether he was scoring against the big the big nations. But I always thought he, I always thought he did. I mean, you look at some yeah. of the games yeah. he did score in, like Spain, yeah. Holland, um, Germany, France, Cup, yeah. Germany. Yeah. You know, the list goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you wanted to collect shirts, I tell you, you'd have some collection if you have one for every club that... Uh, Robbie played for at some stage. You, anyway. I have a couple, yeah, but uh, like, yeah, uh, he was he was some man. But everywhere he went, the fans loved him, and that's mm. always a good sign because he was not the kind of badge kisser. He wasn't there trying to please them. He was there trying to play football. He wanted to score goals. He wanted to play football. Mm. And all of Mick McCarthy's teams, like all of Jack Sharpton's teams, they just wanted to play football. And they went out, and, and that's what you did when you wore the shirt. It gave you that pride, the pride of the jersey. You were putting it on, and you wear those lads. You had that confidence. You go out in five or so. You try to replicate what you see. You go out in the school schoolyard you go out on the Sunday or Saturday if you're playing football it's the same thing I remember having the, the Adidas Predators at the time from the 2002 World Cup Duffer had them yeah I oh, remember yeah. running around the field pretending to be Duffer do you yeah. know what I mean yeah. and I remember skinning my brother and my best mate and I was like what's going on here this is a I don't know, it must be something in the boots. The boots, <laughs> the boots, the boots or the jersey. It was one or the other. I was inspired yeah. as a kid, you know. Yeah. But uh, ah, good times, good times. You know, what I mean? that's what uh, that's what it is. And that's what all the memorabilia is about. It's it's about those memories and it's about rejogging them as as an adult as, and and with your kids. If you have kids, I have a son. He's getting into shirts. When we go around and he sees someone in a shirt, he goes, "Daddy, look at the shirt," and I'll be like, "Oh, that's all right, Joe." <laughs> yeah, I was always mad into him as a child. Like always, like I always wanted. I think my first actual jersey was the 98 Holland away one it wasn't yeah. the orange one it was the away it was like a bluey orange oh, yeah. Yeah, one yeah. yeah but I was fascinated by Clive that's how I got into football watching that World Cup obviously yeah. we were in Dinah Zidane the header uh, against Brazil the rest is history yeah. but that World Cup I got into it and then 
I think my first game was Croatia. Uh, I didn't score a penalty. Uh, 98, we're going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so penalty was a, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so no, was, oh, sorry, 98 against Croatia. It was a free kick, wasn't it? Or maybe it was a penalty. I, I, I it was it definitely was, a dead ball. Yeah, I think a free yeah, kick, but it might have yeah. been a penalty. But and definitely. they just finished third in the World Cup. Yeah. Like That was a massive result. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember watching them as well because they had Suka at the time. Right? Who was the yeah. manager then? Mr. Carthy. Oh, back. boy, I thought you meant Croatia. Croatia. No, not for Croatia. <laughs> See, this, <laughs> this is the thing. This draw is on, is on tomorrow. Like, people are saying, who who do you want to avoid? When McCarthy was in charge, when Charlton was in charge, like, even when Owen Ham was in charge, no one was saying, who do you want to avoid? It was, who do you want to play? Yeah. You know, when we went out and played England in Euro 88, Mick Byrne wasn't, we'll keep it hide at the back and hope to beat them on the break with a 1-0. We said, we'll do it for you, for you today, lads. That was it. We had confidence. We had confidence. McCarthy's teams had confidence. They didn't care if they were playing the Dutch. They didn't care if they were playing the Portuguese. They didn't care if they were playing Iran. They didn't care if they were playing England. They just didn't care. They're like, we're Ireland. We're going out there. And if we lose, we lose. But we're not going out there with any fear of who we're playing. Right? I'm, I'm getting revved up already. Like, oh, <laughs> absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm so, <laughs> like, like, to be fair, like, I personally would have liked Steve Kenny to get the job. But... Technically, yes. T- technically, yeah. Well, the same way, you know, Andy Farrell has the rugby job after Joe Schmidt goes. Yeah. But you never know what'll happen, right? Mm-hmm. Or the same way Jim Gavin took the job after Pat Gilroy left. Like, he was brought in through the under-21s and brought those players with him. I understand the logic of it. It's just not very common in football. It's better than Steve Stoughton's five-year plan, which didn't go quite so well. But, like, ultimately, these guys... McCarthy will instill in them a sense of confidence. The same confidence that a young Duff and a young Keane coming into that team, lads like Matt Holland came in, and they were like, we're not taking any crap off anyone. Kilban. We're going out there. Kilban, his first game didn't go so well under McCarthy, but he built it up again. McCarthy built it up again. He didn't abandon him. He brought him back in. He got him playing again. He gave them confidence. Lads like Carsley. And yeah, he had world, world, like world-class players like Dennis Irwin and Roy Keane. But he made world class players. He got world class performances out of players. Yeah. You know, and that's what you doing. Absolutely. Like and this is we have nothing to fear. I don't want to hear who we'll avoid. I want all the best teams. I want them all <laughs> coming well, to we'll Lansdowne. We'd have to get you back on for a reaction to that. <laughs> uh, well, we need all the worst teams of the next campaign. But, but um <laughs> no we um we were talking about it before, but see the way it's all digital and online now. Why, why would people yeah. want to go to the fair when they can? Yeah, do? so the fair, well, look, that's the thing. The internet made it great to get shirts if you're a collector. But in reality, like, people, if you want to buy any shirt, if you have a particular shirt you want to get, you can go online, you can see a shirt, you can go onto eBay, you can whatever, you can buy it, you hope it arrives, it takes time, you don't know what kind of conditions it's in. Um, with these fairs, when you've got all these different shirts to choose from, you can try them on, you can have a look, you can see what the, the condition is really like. You don't have to wait for post, you don't have to pay for post. They're just there. Even if you only get one, you can see a few of them. You might go in there looking to get a Euro 88 yeah. and come out with, I don't know, uh, a Melbourne like jersey or something like that, something completely random, because you like the look of it, and you're like, I'd like to wear that down the five or something. Well, you, you said know? random there as well. Just like... There's, there's something you don't know what you're going to get. Every fair has been different. There's, like you, you turn up at random stuff. I do like every few months. It always changes. You don't know what you're going to get. There's something exciting about just you know leafing through stuff that's on on rail or, or like going through bargain buckets and just seeing what you pull out. So you just don't know what you're going to get. Um, yeah, like um, and it's Christmas. You can treat yourself. Yeah. yeah, have you have you got an example of, of the shirts that you? Well, show we, we, we brought we brought Sandra. a few different sets. Yeah, yeah. just to give people yeah. an idea of what kind of stuff will be there on Should the day. Them up there on a show no so bother. Well, look, the first sort of sets we have here, these are kind of the ones. These are the internationals. What got a lot of people into shirts Throw them up was there. World Cup. We'll talk through them. Our World Cups, right? So you see this shirt here now. What are you thinking? Uh, it has two World, World Cup 2002. Roberto yeah. Carlos, that hammer of a left foot. Straight in the back of the net. Thinking uh, Ronaldo's terrible hairdo. Yeah, <laughs> or knowing R- hair Ronaldo's back. redemption. And you're thinking, like, that's yeah, a really quality that, shirt. 16 years ago, blink and you miss it, you know? Yeah. Um, again, Barry, you can talk through this one here now. Well, I'm just, I just keep uh, repeating the word ugly. It's not the ugliest of shirts, but uh, there's just something ridiculous. Like, this design is classic. Classic Adidas. They use this template a bit, but it's just like, I don't know, straight away, like, 94, is it? World Cup 94, did the way they set 94? Yeah, just a uh, clean like that, a mental, mental Adidas design. It's brilliant. It's, nice. it's fantastic, a lovely yeah. shirt. Yeah. I mean, when it, World Cups are a big inspiration for shirts, right? Particularly when Ireland weren't qualifying. 
Um, there was obviously some support for Northern Ireland. So that's how I got into football. But you got into football in 2002 when Ireland no, weren't there. Sorry, 98 when Ireland weren't there. Yeah, shouldn't and, have been. And, and they loved that, you know. Um, the other side of it is European club football. Now, I mean, anyone who's who was into European club football in the 1990s will know these two shirts. Oh, wow. I mean, these are these are Marseille. Now, Marseille had an unbelievable team. And considering the heavy, heavy ban that Tappy got and the treatment he got by the people in FIFA, considering what we found out what the FIFA lads were up to in the end, he actually got very hard done by considering how they got treated. But that Marseille team was magic. Like, brilliant, brilliant footballers decide... Four time. Basil Bowley, <laughs> four-year time. Okay, I'm a little bit older. But, like, that that was absolute magic. The early 90s, Trevor Stephen, Chris Waddle, um, Jean-Pierre Papin... Like really, really fantastic footballers. Even even Eric Cantona for a little while, while yeah. he was uh, kung fu kicking lads on the pitch, as opposed to often. And uh, so that's a, another sample of two brilliant shirts, um, which will be available on the day. Oh, um, home and away. Does home and away. <laughs> that's it. We got great long, choice. I love the long sleeve. The long sleeve. Oh, it's class. And that was yeah. the other thing. In those days, you couldn't buy long sleeves in the shops yeah. generally. So they, they, they didn't really start until probably two thousands. Pro- properly getting like long yeah, sleeves. Yeah, nineteen nineties to two thousands. And now they all just wear that. That They're tinsulate under, under yeah, armor, yeah. and they don't really wear long sleeves as much anymore. It's a it's a mission, but it's a miss. It's a big miss. But the big thing that really got people into shirts was Saturday more Saturday morning, Sunday afternoons, Channel Four or Network yeah, Two yeah, if you yeah, were in yeah, the yeah. country. Yeah. Football Italian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Baldy lad. Was, I think it was Monday night or Tuesday. Yeah, night. and if you were on, on uh, BT Sport, J- yeah. James Richardson, yeah, yeah. Peter Brackley, Peter Brackley, the best commentator in football history. If you, Gabrielle. Mark Hottie. Batistuta. Oh, right? I can't think of Batistuta without hearing Batistuta yeah, in, Brackley's vo- in, in Bar- Brackley's voice. Serie A shirts. Absolute pinnacle. 1990 Serie A shirts. We got some examples here. This is a Sampdoria way when Hullet and Platt and Lombardo and yeah. Mancini and all these fantastic players. Yeah. Great, great, great shirt. That's an actual yeah. match worn shirt from uh, Serie A earlier in the season. This is uh, the Motta AC Milan shirt, an original Lotto one. Rudy Hullet, Maldini. Uh, Maldini. That's, that's his strikes me. Was it like his breakthrough yeah. season or something? No, he would have been there a little bit earlier than that, okay. back when they were wearing Adidas. But certainly he was really making his reputation then. And Berlusconi had built an unbelievable side. An unbelievable side. And like that is really classic 1990s. Is, yeah. Again, you're talking 28 years ago yeah. almost, that's you know? Pro Evolution lads would love that, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> of course, this one is only one man. Another ex Everton man as well, of course. Uh, Gaza. Gaza. Yeah. And that was it. Like the Gaza Lazio shirt was a real classic. Uh, 1994. Scored against his first goal in the derby against Roma. It doesn't get any better yeah, than that. Really, you know? yeah. so it, well, no, we, that was the Rangers. Because we, <laughs> we only have a couple of minutes. I want to say this. That if, you, if, you, if you're coming to the market and you're not bringing your wallet, don't worry about it. Because this man is the oracle. Like I say this all the time. But if you want to learn something about a jersey, Barry knows it. Like... You have information on every shirt that is hanging there. It's brilliant. Like it's unbelievable. Yeah. The, the things I've learned from you about so like, the football like shirt. A, should charge um, it. <laughs> walk a museum. No, seriously, yeah. No, do like, best. Just, just do yeah, audio. All these it. all these little things that I didn't know about like you wouldn't consider. I love this one. But, yeah. yeah, and we've got this one here. This is a classic now. This is Brazil. Now the beauty if you're into kits as well and you're a bit nerdy, things like this, the number is screen printed, so it, in the heat it's not falling ah, off. Yeah, yeah. The little Brazilian championship. The, the centenary sort of thing underneath for Santos. Santos was Pele's club, obviously. This would have been Redondo's shirt. Beautiful, beautiful shirt. Like you can see yourself wearing that at seven aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just reminds me of Robinho in the early days. Yeah. Before he was a bit of a we, we might have a quick look through some of the Premier League stuff. Obviously, this there is, was always. This is like uh, the, the toy show, you know. The toy yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> the toy for middle aged football and fans. <laughs> Just waiting for something to go wrong, like the roof falling in or something yeah. like that, this or is, this, the dog to pee. <laughs> this this is just a tiny sample. Like like what we brought on is is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so much vintage, like uh, just walk Premier through stuff. them and you can see. If you know what they are, you'll see them as we're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some beautiful. Also, look at the design on these shirts. Like they don't make them like this anymore. They're just all tight fit template stuff. Like. Really beautiful stuff. Classic that Liverpool shirt, the 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 the, the Ireland players at Liverpool at that time, absolutely Ronnie Whelan, cracker. Ronnie Whelan, Aldridge, uh, Aldridge, yeah. uh, and the Staunton, Houghton. Coming up to Christmas, actually, we have a few of these um, the vintage Adidas stuff, like never been worn since the eighties. So, like, like if you've got somebody who's a fan, there's some really nice yeah, things. Yeah, Christmas presents. Beautiful. Christmas Look at that. Day. That's as Christmassy as it gets. 
You can see Quite Frosty the Snowman wearing that oh, one right, walking yeah, down right, the road, you know? <laughs> so, uh, and uh, this, here we've got another cracker. This is from back when uh, back when Kevin Kilban is starting out at uh, and in his career at West Brom. And you can see how different they are nowadays. That's almost like a rugby jersey. Yeah, yeah. Pretty heavy. You know, pretty heavy, um, but very, very classy. You know? Yeah. You could be wearing that with the Grand Eye colour. Very similar to the bow shirt, obviously, as well. The League of Ireland shirts really are class. Yeah. We just thought, just obviously, we'll, the, a lot of the ones will have our Ireland shirts. And for the new games under McCarthy, it'd be great to get an old school shirt yeah. to bring back that Lansdowne magic, you know? And you do see a lot of old school shirts going to the games, especially yeah. ha hanging around the kind of Balls Bridge Hotel type of area. You do see a lot of these vintage yeah. shirts. Yeah. And here we can see the classic World Cup 94. What a shirt. Only worn in one game uh, in the World Cup against Italy, but what a game. This one here, just for sure, this one here is actually some. This is a Northern Ireland shirt. For their 125 year anniversary you can see the crest is the original crest back when uh ireland were uh obviously a 32 county side playing in uh rep one team in ireland and that was it and the the harp is the obviously irish harp and the blue was because ireland played in blue back in those days oh. st patrick's blue we had to change the green against uh, scotland <laughs> there you go and this one just as an interesting thing how 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 business can affect design you can see this ireland shirt here which we wore in belfast when we beat uh, the north 4-0 uh you've got the the orange stripe down here and the green stripe and that little orange stripe there what do you reckon that represents so that's there so you can actually see the l in opal oh Richard. like and the green right? and then the funny thing is when we played the north and we didn't have opal on it it still had that ridiculous bit of orange on it so that's that's how uh if you're a football nerd that's what kind of gets you into it but look you can uh you can see those it's just a, cl a classy shirt um all of these will be available and loads more yeah. at the fair, Saturday the 8th. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. <laughs> we'll see you there. There'll be a few of us there. It'll be jamming. It starts at 11.30. Kicks off 11.30. Points, pizza, jerseys. What more do you want? More see you there. Want. Thanks Happy for watching. Happy Christmas. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button now. And if you never want to miss a video, click the bell for alerts. For all our other social media platforms, check out this list below. And as always, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Of course, I had to change, and if you remember, and you will remember.